Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marnie's Nicole and I'm an acrylic painter. And today is part two to every single thing I painted in 2020. We're focusing on digital painting um, and everything that I created digitally in 2020. The part two that no one asked for, but I decided to give you. So um, we are going to hop right into it by showing actually something that I forgot that I painted in 2020 because it was hanging on my wall. And it's this painting right here, which I did on a whim um, in the middle of fall season. Um, and I completely forgot that this was something I painted because it's not in a style that I normally do at all. And I forgot that I painted it because it's just been hanging on the wall in my living room as decor. And I often just kind of thought of it as like a decor piece, like I picked it up, but no, I, I painted this. So it is just a landscape scene with a runaway horse in the middle. This was that. So yeah, technically there was one thing missing from the last video, but <laughs> here it is. And so with that being said, let's hop into the actual digital art video. So this is technically a digital arts diaries update um, because there was so much artwork that I kind of doodled and did during 2020 as far as digital art that I kind of never updated you guys on. And so today we're going to go through all of those things. Even now into 2021, it's now about five or six-ish months that I've been painting digitally and I'm loving it. It's so easy for me to kind of get the idea out quickly and efficiently color block color story I can really plot out all of my ideas really quickly for digital art and because of the time I've been putting into it especially these last few months I've kind of developed a style with my digital art although I'm not settled on anything yet I'm like exploring different options and, and seeing where I lend I'm sure I'll be completely different by the time 2021 is over, but even still, I'm starting to have ideas that are concepts for art, but art specifically in the guise of digital art. And so I use my iPad, which I got in September for digital art. I use Procreate. It is the only digital art uh, other than like Photoshop that I've ever used. And I really, really like it. There may be other like systems out there that are for digital art. Um, I don't know about them and I, I will eventually seek them out. But for now, I'm very happy with Procreate. Uh, these are all of my uh, sketches and pieces so far. I use them and categorize them in folders. I have a painting concepts 2020 sketches and concepts 2020 self portraits 2020 doodles and abstracts 2020 and yeah <laughs> then we move on into our 2021 i'm one of those people who loves to stay organized the first thing i ever painted was a doodle sketch i just wanted to just jump right in like day one i got the ipad i unboxed it i downloaded the app appropriate i made this baby right here and it is a a painting of just a girl with big earrings I played with all of the brushes I just wanted to figure everything out this piece actually has no layers at all because I didn't know what the layers were <laughs> so from this piece to um, the pieces you'll see way later on even the pieces in the 2021 I've really really advanced and I've learned how to layer and I've learned how to really get the best a combination of sketching in this and painting in this with my style of art because I really like a painterly look I like to see strokes of paint and I like to see like sketching and like um, distressing and, and everything like that I want to see the process of the painting and I, I really believe in the fact that painting different strokes the directionality of a paintbrush it lends to little 
magical moments in a painting like having that brush stroke create that shadow create that movement you need that in a painting in my opinion for it to be successful I, I need that for my work and so being able to figure that out here perfect perfect um the next concept I made was actually for this here it is a sketch concept and it was the piece that I did for uh, stolen songbird and in the middle of the night I picked up my um, stylus pen at the time I've since upgraded to an apple pen which I love um, but I started off with just a basic stylus pen it, I think it was like ten dollars it quickly fell apart on me <laughs> um, but I, I just used that really quickly to create this and even some portions of it I did use like my hand for it. like it was just so simple so easy that painting ended up like this which you may or may not have seen in other videos because I've talked about it a lot it took me 10 weeks to finish <laughs> so it took up a big portion of like my art brain for so long um, but I did that sketch and then we'll just go ahead and go through everything else that I've painted from that sketch I did do a self portrait this is my first self-portrait digitally. I think it really looks like me and that's probably because I used a photo reference and I used the photo to do my line work and sketch my lines. I still do that. I trace essentially photos or references or different um, pictures that I have an idea that I want to paint. A lot of times I will grab maybe 10 pictures of different things that I foresee in the painting idea as a reference and some of them I will trace and sketch out directly from or some I will use for inspiration for the whole photo but I don't think tracing is bad as long as you're not copying one of painting or picture that someone else has ownership of but using like a royalty free photo for your reference I think it's okay to trace it as long as you're turning it into something completely different and in this case I trace my own face <laughs> because I really want it to get accurate proportions because again I struggle with that so um, I have that picture another self-portrait where I didn't use any um, tracing I just kind of went ahead and went in <laughs> it looks a little funny and it's more doodle than anything else so we have this and then this is another one I didn't use any reference for and I don't think it looks anything like me except for the outfit because the outfit is fire <laughs> um, but there's that I did this doodle of a little princess blowing kisses and then finally I did this doodle right here of a man kind of licking the neck of a lady there um I do love art I love love art this is one of my favorite favorite pieces of love art I did this a couple of years back it's still one of my favorite pieces of all time there's so much emotion in there um <laughs> So um, I do often, and so I do often do pieces like this where it's focusing on like intimate scenes, love and that kind of thing. Not my favorite, but this was again just a doodle. Another doodle, since we're in the doodle type of vein, we have this one. And here's one where I kind of played with abstracts. I made a little character and I played with really um, creating an abstract background. I don't often work in abstracts. But I love them when other people do them. I just can't figure out how I want to create abstracts, if that makes sense. And so I play around with like different concepts often, enough that I know I haven't found my thing yet um, in that vein. This is a figurative abstract because I really, really wanted to capture movement in the form of dance and like very aggressive. It reminds me of praise dance or um, African drumming dance. I used to be um, in a performing arts school and I took an African dance class and it reminds me of this movement, the caption of it. I like this, but it also felt like a doodle to me. It didn't feel finished, so we have that. I did this, which was another of my little murdery art series. If you don't know, I have a series of paintings, digital art, and regular acrylic paintings um, of murdery. <laughs> 
Harlequin Quinn-esque paintings and art. Uh, there's something very fun, I think is the right word for it, but there's something very joyful to me personally of uh, these very pleasant, if you bleeped wholesome scenes, um, everyday scenes. And then it's really like, portray murder. <laughs> When I talk about it, it's so, it's it sounds so bad, but it's like the opposite because this is pleasant. She's just, oh, I got something on my shoe. Oh my gosh, what is that? And then you look and there's a bloody hand there. She's dripping blood, so clearly she's involved. It's not like she just walked past a puddle and got blood on her shoe. No, she was a part of whatever this is. And then it has the saying, look what you made me do, Taylor Swift quote, because awesome, love her. Um, and then just, she's already caught, like there's a high beam on her. The, the background has like shades of red in it, supposed to be like from like sirens and like flashing lights from the cops and stuff. And she's, she's makeup up on her face, she's happy. Yeah, she's living life, so we have that one. The next murdery scene. And I'm not going to talk about all of these pieces because I, I can link them up above the playlist where you can learn more. But this was one of my favorites. It's the definition of, baby, look what I did for you. And then, sword. <laughs> Decapitation. Like, you could almost forget that there is, like, murder happening on this side because there's love strongly emanating from this side this cool cat chilling with his his lady and they're just looking at each other with so much love on their face but very harlequin us because there's murder involved yeah uh, another harlequin s theme i'll actually turn it this way so you can see it better i swear no one was harmed in the making of those those images but <laughs> sometimes my, my brain makes like art like this don't don't judge anyway um this is a rendition of a painting that I did as a sketch. I wanted to see what I could do with it digitally. Um, and it's me and my best friend. This was the first painting that I really got into. And it's one of the earlier ones where I really learned the tools and the paint brushes. I played with layering. I played with a different fire element pens and brushes. Um, this was well before I started buying like brush sets for Procreate. It's just a dark lady and I, I absolutely love <laughs> the piece and I love what I learned from the piece because I really did learn to use all of the different brushes and really just involve myself in the digital art process. So there's that. This is a piece that started off digitally. And I didn't like how it was going. I didn't like the proportions. It's since been abandoned. Um, but I also talked about this piece here if you want to check it out. Uh, because the painting uh, went from digital art to acrylic painting on canvas. I then abandoned that painting and this digital sketch and kind of moved on. And I talked about the process of abandoning that piece. Why I felt it needed to be abandoned what I had hoped to finish and finalize as the idea and why it wasn't working for me because my whole point of being on YouTube and sharing my process is that I have these questions. Why do you abandon ours? Why don't you finish sketches with some of my favorite creators? And you don't always get that answer. And so my job here, what I want to do is share why and how and what I'm doing as an artist, the reasonings behind it so you get a glimpse and so like a creative process, even if yours is different than mine, you kind of get an idea of like, okay, that's how she's feeling. That's how that piece didn't end up the way it did to her. That's why she's leaving it and abandoning it. I did this piece. It also uh, got switched to an acrylic painting um, before I really respected the digital art process. And I hated the painting. I don't think this is finished either, but it's really nice. I can't really be mad at it. Here's one I never showed off, but it's basically a concept of like, this is the new normal. Three girls in the room together. They're not even facing each other, not interacting, but this is how they're hanging out. She's on her phone. She's on her laptop. She's doing selfies 
and dance videos on TikTok. So it's like a social commentary piece. And I do like it. I just, I don't know why I never shared it. And this was the last finished piece that I did for the year. This was a murdery severed head. It was almost a continuation of my Black Widow one. <laughs> um, and kind of my thought process was maybe I would make a storybook um, or a comic strip um, with this Harley Quinn-esque theme just throughout and just be like this story about like pleasant scenes of murder and kind of connect all of the murdery pieces and maybe short form stories because I do write often, I do poetry. Anyway, we have this piece and then we have an unfinished piece. I actually never finished it. It was meant for Christmas holidays and it's a lighter sketch. So let me bring it a little closer. Just, you know, uh, dad picking up his kid to put the tree star on and the mom brushing out the leaves and a cute family scene. I just never finished it. I don't know why. And then this is the type of concepting that I will do. I will grab photo inspirations. I will swatch colors that I'm interested in using and let that board just kind of speak a story that I'm going to tell. And from there, I will create a piece. In this case, this became this piece right here. And so there's some subtle differences, but it really did follow the concept of a girl posed and wearing a mask and surrounded by these very over large flowers. So that's kind of how those end up together. And so that is everything that I digitally painted in 2020. We're already moving on to a great start for 2021. And I really can't wait to see what my digital art looks like in a year or two or three. Because just like with my acrylic paintings, I am not the best at it in terms of polishing and finishing. There are so many artists who have so much more detailed skills, perfected line work. Um, <laughs> and I can't help but think that sometimes I'm lazy with my art and that I don't want to finish these clearly finishable things like things like cleaning up you know when I paint outside a line or something like that but I think think sometimes it also is just part of my style and it gives it some texture and that I can be very critical of the work I'm doing and I think so far as far as digital art goes I'm, I'm doing okay <laughs> I'm doing okay so um anyway thank you so so much for watching. My name is Marnice Nicole. I'm an acrylic painter and I am out. Bye.